As Secretary of State, I traveled above the Arctic Circle. I traveled to Svalbard. And the scientist there said to me, Mr. Secretary, if you really want to understand what's happening with climate change, you have to go to Antarctica. And so I went back to Washington and told my staff, we're going to Antarctica. And indeed, uh, I flew out. I voted by absentee ballot. I flew out on the very election day in the United States. And learning the news I learned flying over the Pacific, we almost thought we'd stay in the Antarctic. Um, but I decided, obviously, to come back for the fight. Um, but in the Antarctic, it was magical. I mean, I've never seen wilderness like that. There was something eerily grounding in this. And the first-hand impact of climate change that was being described to me by the, what, nearly 20-plus scientists from each of the 20-plus countries that go there to do research, chilled me in terms of, beyond the cold, in terms of uh, what we're facing. I was at ground zero for climate change at McMurdo Station. And as I listened to these scientists from all over the world and looked at chart after chart where they traced what has been happening, describing the latest deeply alarming evidence of what is going on, uh, I was generally scared. How do you translate this into a language that the average citizen can understand and connect to? I flew by helicopter over the great West Antarctic ice sheet, which now people say is threatened to perhaps break off or slide down and go off into the ocean to melt. I learned how the warmer water is spilling over the continental shelf and churning below the ice and creating instability in it. A scientist from New Zealand named Gavin Dunbar uh, described what they're seeing as an unmistakable canary in the coal mine. And he warned that some thresholds, if we cross them, cannot be reversed. 